This is why I never tap hard materials. It's about to get crazy. It's about to go down. It's about to go down. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Titan, Titans of CNC. And uh, we're going to talk about tapping and thread milling and why I prefer thread milling over tapping when it comes to hard materials. There's just a lot of questions about tapping and thread milling that come up on a daily basis, all right? So the first thing I wanna do is simply say, if you love the way we're throwing down the education and entertainment, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you like this video, and put your comments down below. And just like I'm doing today, you could see it in a future vlog. All right, so let's just jump into it, all right? So for those that don't know, let me just explain a couple things, right? We have three different styles here. One is a thread mill, one is a cut tap, and one is a roll tap, all right? And there's a few simple differences. One, the roll tap or form tap actually forms the thread. The cut tap and thread mill cut the thread. All right. Now, the roll tap and the cut tap can actually be ordered in different sizes, meaning if you have a 1032 or a quarter 20, you can have a different H value that actually changes the diameter of the thread. All right. But when it comes to the thread mill, you can actually program it like an end mill and you can actually go into the material or back out of the material to get that perfect thread. And another difference would be the cut tap and the thread mill, you would pre-drill the exact ID of the correct thread, and then the tap or the thread mill would cut the threads in. A roll tap starts out with a little bit larger hole, but when it comes down, it actually pushes the material, and at the same time that it pushes the material, it retracts the material, which forms the thread. So like if you had a quarter 20 tap, the hole size for a cut tap would actually be 201, so 0 0.201. But if you went to a roll tap, it'd be larger at 0.228 diameter. But as you actually drop in and form the thread, it actually push and retract, and when the tap came out, it would be at a 201, right? Because it actually gets smaller. Make sense? All right, so there's just some differences, right? Form, cut, and thread mill. One thing I'll also say is that if you have questions on thread mills and how to use them, we've actually put out a few videos, all right? So in one of the videos, I actually teach you exactly how to hand program a thread mill. So drop down, G91 over, come up, boom, right? I teach you exactly how to hand program it. And even if you don't hand program it, the video is worth watching because you can understand the mechanics of how it all works. And then there's another video tutorial where I actually machine a giant Titan 1M out of Inconel. And in that, we took this Kenna Metal thread mill and actually gave you all the specs to actually be successful in Inconel 625 thread milling. Check it out. Now, if I'm tapping a bunch of holes or even a few holes in aluminum and they're blind holes, I'll basically always use a form tap. Form taps, you can go fast with them, right? They like that heat. They like the heat because they want the metal to move, right? So a lot of times where I might slow down with a cut tap, I'll actually speed up with a form tap. Now, Think about it, I said blind holes. That means a hole that's not coming out the other side. Why would I say that? Because when a form tap actually comes into the material, it pushes a burr on the back side of the material, which then needs to be machined or chamfered on the other side in a way that's clean so that the thread remains perfect, right? And sometimes as tools wear, that's a problem. And that's why when I actually have through holes dropping down below the bottom surface or into a pocket, I usually tap with a cut tap because a cut tap actually cuts the thread in perfectly 
and it doesn't leave a big burr. And therefore on the other side, it's easier to clean up. Now, back in the late 90s, I had a big Toyota 550SX, and I used to actually run a ton of titanium. And we had these camera housings that actually went on these ROVs, remote operated vehicles that dropped to the bottom of the ocean. And these camera housings were made out of titanium, and they were extremely expensive. I started machining these guys, and we were actually tapping the titanium housings with a cut tap. But guess what? We were actually running 24 hours a day on that machine. And although we made some incredible parts, we went through a learning process when it came to tapping because we started breaking taps in the titanium. You know, there's a lot of people that say like, oh, you can still get the taps out or you can do this. Well, we couldn't get the taps out. And just the amount of time that it took to evaluate a broken tap in an expensive housings, we're talking thousands of dollars, right? It was just a waste of time. You see, when the tap engages, it would break and then it would keep pushing because it didn't have enough horsepower to actually stop the machine. So the machine didn't know that the tap was broken and it would just crush it into the titanium and that was a huge problem. And we scrapped out a lot of camera housings and then one day we simply made a change. We got rid of the cut tap, we went to a multi-flute thread mill, we dropped to the bottom, did one pass, dropped back down, did another pass, came out, and the thread was perfect. And guess what? There were times where the thread mill broke, but when it broke, because it was smaller than the ID diameter of the thread, we were able to simply take the thread mill out of the hole, broken, replace it, retouch it off, and continue the process. And from that day on, as we journeyed into aerospace, where you make crazy expensive parts and you have low volume, I never tapped hard materials again. I always thread mill to make perfect threads. And guess what? No more scrapping out expensive parts because you broke a tap in it. Boom.